you guys are boasting because you don't really it's identity crisis that is disturbing you all of you are trying to build a reputation and pride in what you were given can a man receive anything except it's given to him from above paul said let no man boast in men for all things are yours you know in this generation we have or we have allowed people's opinion or society to define for us certain things for instance like success we have allowed the internet allowed social media allow people's opinion to define for us what success is if you are in business this is the template for success if you are in ministry this is the template and it's all around physical infrastructure and people while that is very good and important the main reason for all of those things is to drive the vision but when we forget about the vision and begin to camp around those things as shock absorbers then we are accepting a wrong definition of success and that's why many young people in our day are under pressure and god brought this conference to relieve you of that pressure and bring you into rest so if you don't gather crowd you are not successful as a minister if you don't have a meeting like this with LED screens and lights and oh, you are not successful. If your face is not on billboard, you are not successful. If you are not trending, you don't have views. <laughs> Things that if you bring it into eternity, they will melt before you enter eternity. Where do we get our definitions from? That's the cure that God wants to bring. And Paul said, well, you know, you know something. Okay, since you guys are priding everything, let me just tell you. The reason why you are doing that is because you are operating from a lower level of knowledge. He says, when you rise in the consciousness of who you are in Christ, you will come to the realm where all th- you see that all things are yours. Because the Bible says, if he did not spare his son, Romans 8, 32, but gave him for our sake, how much more shall he not with him freely give us all things? So, there is a realm you, of consciousness you come into. When we talk about the glory, the glory, it's simply coming to the realm where you become conscious that you have all because you are in Christ. So, indirectly, it is Christ that has all. Ephesians says it, Corinthians says it, say that at the fullness of the dispensation, God will gather all things in one, which is Christ. Everything in him, subject to him, conform to him. So the reason why you have all things is because you are in him. So you must rise in your knowledge, your awareness to that consciousness. That all things does not mean I have it physically. But you live from a realm where you realize that everything is under your authority as a new man in Christ. And so it's not about whether it is here or not. Can I tell you something? This is the reason why even in prophecy, do you know that prophecy is not really telling you anything new? Let me, with all due respect, and I, won't, I, I can make mistake here because I'm ready for correction after now. But, but you think of it. Listen, anything you are told, you, you, <laughs> that's the problem with being a public figure. You, every, you are now... You, instead of you to preach from God to people, you are now preaching to umpires. Amen. You are under surveillance. Relieve yourself from that pressure, my brother. Amen. If you make mistake, you are not the first person to make mistake. But can I ask you something? If a prophet comes to you and tells you something, it may be new to you. But are you saying that it is new to God? If you believe in predestination, then there is nothing prophesied to you that didn't exist. It's just that you had not risen to the realm of consciousness. Because there are three levels of knowledge. There is awareness, there is reasoning, and there is consciousness. Awareness means you are abreast with the fact. Reason is when you begin to interact with the fact. And you do that in meditation and that's when you begin to touch the substance the real truth behind it consciousness is where you have come into the f- you are now fully informed of what you are you are dealing with 
The reason why it's new to you is because you are not yet conscious that this has existed in God's plan before time began. So it's new to you but not new to God. So what we call future is actually in the past. The Bible says what has been will be and what is has been. So it's nothing new. Does that mean you shouldn't celebrate and honor the prophetic? No, you should. You should. But God, God uses that agency to bring you into consciousness because until you come into the consciousness of what God is doing, he cannot begin to relate with you and partner with you to fulfill that vision. Consciousness. Many people, what is stopping them from coming to the consciousness of what God intends to do with them is that they have decided to accept the opinion of men. But God told me to tell you tonight that all things are yours. It may not manifest now, but all things are. Everything that will come in the next five years was planned by God to come even before you were formed in your mother's womb. What you say you don't have now, in five years time, you may have had it and forgotten about it. So if we bring you into eternity where there is no past, present and future, you'll discover that everything you had and will have and you have now have all always existed with you. 